my name is Casey Anderson. I'm uh, the president and head guide at Pyramid Fly Company. And I'm going to show you, like Dave said here, flies that will guarantee 30 pound fish. All right. So like I said, we're going to start with a fly called the booby. Uh, Mike Sexton pattern. He's also from Reno. Um, one thing about Pyramid is our rolls are solely barbless hooks. So before tying, I always pinch my barb first. And the biggest thing I found out about Pyramid flies is the less materials and the more simple it seems to be the better way to go. Um, they're, they're so toothy and they're actually one of the few salmonid species that have two rows of teeth like a shark. Um, they have very large teeth so they tend to really tear up your flies. And a lot of these flies were also dragging through sand. So most of our flies are more built for durability rather than, than looks. We're looking for certain movements with these flies. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie two floating patterns that we actually fish with sinking line off the bottom. Um, and the way those work is we're going to have, we have big sand flats where these, where the fish come and they cruise these ledges where our sand drops are. And we're actually going to drag our line through that sand and these floating flies are going to be off a tag. And these tags will allow these flies, when I strip it, that fly will sink down and float back up very quickly. So we're getting a jig motion from the bottom with these floating flies. I always use red thread on any sort of bait fish pattern at Pyramid. A lot of the Tui Chub, which is our main bait fish food source, has a lot of exposed gill plates growing up and so do the small trout as they, as they put them in. So I always tie red collars on any of my bait fish patterns and it's, it hands down works far better than not having any red at all on that, on any of your streamers or your bait fish patterns. Um, so we're going to start with this red thread. This is the big fly. Nice and thick so we can cinch everything down. We don't want those teeth cutting through it. We don't want to, as we're dragging it through the sand, having anything that's going to tear up our fly other than making sure we're getting our fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a nice base, about two thirds of the way down. And this is a very simple pattern right here. I have two materials. This right here is the Enrico Puglossi. This is the three inch brush midnight. And this has a lot of UV. We tie with a lot of UV at Pyramid. Uh, especially during springtime, what happens is their ocular glands expand and their cones will expand. And they tend to pick up UV better a lot, especially during their uh, pre-spawn and then during spawn. So we do tie with a lot of UV. So if you notice, this is just black and UV on a wire brush. And because it's a little bit longer, like I said, we're about two thirds of the way down the hook shank. And we're just going to make it nice and simple, nice and tight all the way up. And like I said, these aren't built for being pretty. These are built for strictly movement and durability. So what I'm going to do is simply just spin this brush as I pull it back, coming around. evenly spaced out. We don't want the body super thick because we want this material to still flow when we're moving or when we're stripping these flies in. So as you can see I'm just brushing it back. I heard someone say are Chewy Chub black. Yeah. They're actually a lot of brown and gold and silver and black when they're a little bit smaller. Um, what I see, what seems to work really well is high contrast. Um, some of those big fish, their eyesight isn't very good, so something that will push water and still have high contrast seems to be very successful for us. 
And so two each hub, usually roughly range from one to three inches is gonna be their average size, but they do get up to even 18, 20 inches. Um, an, average, an average adult fish will be about 10 inches. But the cutthroat really key on those one to three inch size fish. One is they mass together a lot easier and what the, what the large fish will do is actually come up and they won't try to sometimes grab a fish in particular, they'll actually come up and they'll throw their head and tail around and try to smash as many fish as they can in a bait ball and as those fish are stunned and killed and they start to sink down, the fish will come below that and easily eat multiple at a time instead of wasting a lot of energy on one. Also, too, it's a lot easier to, to digest multiple small fish than it is one big large fish. Right, it'd be like eating a whole entire steak meal and then trying to run a marathon. So we're gonna cinch down this fiber here again, just making a really thick collar because this will get dragged through the sand. And what I have here is tube foam. It comes in all different types of colors, different densities. And what I'm gonna do is kinda just cut off these little excess points here just to make it a little bit more flush and even. So we have a nice cut even space right here. And just like dumbbell eyes, I'm just gonna lay this over the top and do our crisscross over that. And I want it to be nice and even. And like I said, we're not building for necessarily looks. Booby flying, Jack. Yep, this is the booby. We all like boobies. So right here, as you can see, just like the dumbbell eyes are, and you can see how one side's longer than the other. This is the most important part of these boobies is we want to have even eyes. Because if our eyes are uneven, that fly will end up spinning on itself and twist up your line or it'll sit sideways with the hook coming out to the side. So we wanna to try to get our eyes even as possible. And I'm really gonna build up that red, this red nose and collar on this here. So I'll come in and kind of look over it from the top there. Trim down so it's generally the same size. <laughs> so once we have these tied on, just a couple wraps right behind that eye. And we're just gonna do a little whip finish. You can put, uh, if you like to use any sort of sallies or UV, any sort of hardener, um, you can either put it on before or after. But like I said, we're gonna be dragging these, these through the sand, so we wanna make sure they're tough as possible. And by the end of the, a few fish later, these are gonna look like chewed bubble gum on these eyes. Right, so sorry, I didn't even do the recipe here. So on this hook, this one is actually a little bit thinner than I prefer. Um, any sort of stripping or bait fish pattern, I really try to use a 3X heavy hook. Um, a lot of these patterns are a little bit smaller. So if you get, a, if you get the size, I like, really like those, the Mustad size 10, just straight shank um, and 3X heavy, even a 2X short and 3X heavy, the real stout, medium bend, we're not getting too outrageous on our bend there. And we wanna just make sure everything is as solid as possible because we're gonna be using anywhere from 15 to 20 pound test while we're stripping these flies. So if we get into a fish that's over 20 pounds and we have a 15 pound test and we're fighting that fish, the last thing we wanna happen is for that hook to bend out. So here's just a little bit of UV hardener. Oops. 
And I'll really kind of pack it on that bottom there, like I said, because we're going through, dragging that through the sand. And one thing I really like to cure my UV faster is this, actually it's a laser point, but it's a UV laser pointer. Really, really strong. Cures it pretty, in, pretty much instantly there. And like I said, I'm really building up that this back collar right here because we're dragging that right through the sand. So as simple as this is, this is one of the most effective stripping flies that we have. All it is is just it looks like a small bait fish. These eyes are going to push a lot of that water and make a lot of that movement as we're stripping it through. One thing that you could do too, on any other sort of still water, anything that you guys are fishing, damsel flies or anything else, is scale all this down and tie a lot of olive patterns. Because of the damsel fly making a lot of movement but not going very fast, if you're fishing one of these booby flies, scale down, you could do the olive eyes and olive body, however you like, whether it's a marabou tail or any sort of material, if you fish it with an intermediate line, you'll be able to fish that with a lot of movement, but you're really not going where at the same time. So if you have a lot of loose fibers on that back, then we're stripping that real, real slow and quick at the same time where we're doing those little short strips like we would for a damselfly. It's one of the most effective damselfly patterns I've used still water wise. And I'm sure you can see it just, you know, obviously it looks like the eyes and everything too, if you can imagine that scale down and it being all olive. Really, really effective, especially in springtime at Pyramid Lake. But all this is doing is just mimicking a bait fish pattern. So as we're, what's going to happen is this is going to float off the bottom here. And every time we strip, it's going to dart down and float back up, dart down, float back up, dart down, float back up. And we're actually getting a jig motion instead of you know having a fly that's heavy and we're pulling it up it's essentially doing the same motion but the fly is doing all the work for us all we have to do is pull our strip in so that all depends on on the weather and the depth we're trying to fish there's a lot of there's a lot of um, parts of the lake that are very shallow with a quick drop and that's a lot of where we're fishing our fish we don't have too many vegetation structures or big rock structures throughout the lake that the fish can kind of take cover on and use as ambush points. What they do is they cruise these sand ledges and we're casting past the ledge and bringing that up into the flat. And they'll come up and see the, as they're cruising that ledge that comes perpendicular, they come and see that and they'll chase it onto the flat. And you know they don't want that to get away into that shallow water. And it's a nice ambush point on that ledge. They have deep water access if they need to get away. And so depending, because and then other on the other end too, there's big rock structures with really deep drops. Um, one of the most effective ways to actually fish this is still with um, amnesia or big game fluoro in a shooting head. And the reason for that is we get a lot of wind and strong currents at Pyramid Lake. So if you have a shooting head with a floating line, by the time that you're sinking, you're way off to one of the side or the other and you have a big bend in your line. If you're using the, that big game floor amnesia with a heavy, you know, anywhere, anything from a T11, T14, with that shooting head, you're straight down the bottom and as soon as you come tight to it, you're not getting that big wash like you would with you know a floating line or an intermediate line. So a lot of the times like a full sink or a shooting head with a, a running line that is amnesia or like a big game fluoro really works well. Uh, one of our favorite lines is called the Airflow 40 Plus and that's a shooting head. It's a 36 foot shooting head with uh, intermediate running line. And it's a 120 foot line so you can really get some good casts out there. Paint, painting eyeballs, um, if you find the right type of foam, you can actually stick those, the eyeballs that you would on say a streamer or any of those, like a fish head, yeah. you can actually stick those on the side of this and uh, it works really well. Same thing if you get the red eyes and do that red collar. But um, yeah, painting eyeballs is always a great option. I actually 
had a red sharpie in my pocket that will just poke a dot right on the side. But that's a that's a great question, and it and it is very very effective, especially something with eyes. Um, I'm sure since you asked the question, you've noticed the difference from eyes and not eyes on on certain flies. Um, and you can make them as long as you'd like. A really good one is too is the long, you know, loose marabou tail. That way, when it's floating up and down, it's getting a lot of that. Um, a lot of that wavy movement coming through.